Um, sorry, I'm not in class today. I'm not feeling super well. And also please excuse my voice, but I wanted to make sure my auditory learners had a chance to process today's information. Um, here's our agenda for today. In Schoology, you'll find your homework, chapter 16.1, Life is Cellular. And there should be plenty of time in class to work on this today. As always, our norms and expectations are to be punctual, be prepared, be productive, be present, and be polite. Test corrections will start next week. Because I am out today, any hopes I had of um, being done a little early are probably done because I still have to give makeup tests. But here's the schedule where you can pick up test corrections starting next week. And we have four slides of notes today, so please have something to write on and something to write with. Today our objectives will be that you guys will be able to identify the structure of all cells and differentiate between cell types. Our first slide of note, it's a chunky one, so get ready. A cell is the basic unit of all forms of life, okay? This is part of cell theory. Your homework tonight will go over the other two parts of cell theory. You are also introduced to it in the Ed Puzzle from last Friday. So cell theory, the most basic part of cell theory is that a cell is the basic unit of all forms of life. So we're gonna talk quickly about size and scale of cells. Um, in your slides, you guys have access to these slides. If you click on this link right here, you can see that it will take you to a size and scale guide of a cell. And what it's doing is it's going to take you through things that we know, like coffee beans, sesame seeds, grains of rice. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, there is um, a scale that you guys can look at, and the scale will switch. Right now we're in millimeters. The scale will definitely switch as we zoom in. So here we go. Coffee bean, grain of rice, sesame seed. As we zoom in, we get a grain of salt, an amoeba, a paramecium. These are both cells. Um, they're both single-celled organisms. Here we have a human egg. And if we get in a little bit farther, we have a photoreceptor. This is one of the cells in your eyes that allows you to see. There's a skin cell. A lot of you guys, when we were talking about cells, knew about red blood cells. That's about eight micrometers. There's that X chromosome that we all know about right here. So it's smaller than a red blood cell. Here's another type of cell called Baker's yeast. It's in the um, fungus family. Remember the mitochondrion? It's where cellular respiration happens. So we have the mitochondria. Mitochondrion is a single. The lysosome, we haven't learned about that yet. Here is the flu virus, the HIV virus, a coated vesicle. This is the virus that causes hepatitis and the rhinovirus that causes the common cold. A ribosome. Here is an antibody. This is something that helps us get better. A phospholipid, remember one of the four biomolecules, lipids, a phospholipid. There is a glucose molecule right there. Remember glucose, the final one of the final products of photosynthesis, the reactant of cellular respiration. Here's methionine, which is an amino acid which is the building block of protein. Here's adenine, which is a nucleotide. We're gonna learn about that this unit. A water molecule and all the way down at the bottom, right now we are at 100 picometers. So at about 340 picometers is a carbon atom. We're gonna zoom back out just so you guys can get the scale. Carbon atom is the smallest and we zoom back out. And we're starting to get back into cells, sperm and egg. And we're back out at a coffee bean.
So feel free to use that as a tool to kind of orient yourself to the size of cells. There were several cells in there. Here's your second slide of notes. What do all cells have in common? All cells are surrounded by a thin, flexible barrier called a plasma membrane. All cells have cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like substance inside. All cells contain genetic information in the form of DNA. And all cells have ribosomes, which is the site of protein synthesis. So we're gonna learn more about the plasma membrane, we're gonna learn more about DNA, and we're gonna learn more about ribosomes in this unit. The cytoplasm, if you wanna learn more about that, definitely uh, AP Bio or Anatomy and Physiology will be the place for you. Now in our bodies, we have two types of cells. We have somatic cells and we have sex cells. We've learned about those. But in the world, in all the living things that we know on earth, we can do divide all the cells on earth into two types. We have prokaryotic cells and prokaryotes are cells that do not enclose their DNA in a nucleus. Then we have eukaryotic cells and eukaryotes are cells that enclose their DNA in a nucleus. Eukaryotes also contain plasma membrane bound organelles. They have all these little structures inside of them that help them function. Prokaryotes are just kind of a lot of cytoplasm, the jelly-like substance inside. And in that cytoplasm, the DNA is there. And there's some other stuff too we'll talk about. Now, only eukaryotes. So if you see these two things in a cell, you know right away that it is a eukaryote, a nucleus. So eukaryotes have a nucleus, which is a large membrane bound structure that holds our DNA. DNA does not leave the nucleus. It doesn't, okay? Sometimes the nucleus can, um, can go away when cells are about to replicate, but it always forms right back up. DNA is too big to leave the nucleus. Organelles are special membrane bound structures that perform important functions within the cell. So you guys know about two of them already. You know about chloroplasts and mitochondria because we've talked about them already, okay? Now, no shade to prokaryotes. The first organisms to do photosynthesis three billion years ago were prokaryotes. Shout out to the prokaryotes. Without them, we wouldn't have an oxygenated atmosphere. Um, prokaryotes are oftentimes the basis of our uh, food um, webs and food chains, right? We have photosynthetic prokaryotes like cyanobacteria. Prokaryotes are really, really awesome. Some scientists even think prokaryotes are responsible for our, um, our mitochondria and plants chloroplasts because they think that there was a symbiotic relationship that formed between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells way, way back in evolutionary history. But that's a theory for another time. No shade to prokaryotes. But in this unit, we are mostly going to be discussing eukaryotes. Eukaryotic, eukaryotic cells are generally larger and more complex than prokaryotic cells. They contain dozens of highly specialized structures called organelles. And back in the day, you would have to memorize all of the organelles. The standards for biology has changed. The focus has gone away less from memorization and more towards understanding. So we're going to understand how some of these organelles work within the function of the cell, and therefore we'll have to learn about their structure, but we are not going to memorize all of the organelles. Okay, so that's not how we do it anymore. For the rest of the period, you can work on chapter 16.1. It starts off with talking about the invention of microscopes, introduces you guys to the different types of microscopes and their uses. 
and then goes into the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Your e-text will read to you. It's in Schoology. The digital text is a PDF. It does have those blue sections that are the key phrases. And the physical textbooks are also available to you while you're in the classroom. Please be sure to return them to the back when you're done.